Washington Commanders have interviewed offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy to potentially fill their open head coaching position. Is there any shot EB actually gets the job? We'll talk about that on today's uh, edition of the Commander Support, as well as a Jonathan Allen trade rumor that would send him to the Green Bay Packers. Pretty interesting stuff there. And then we'll finish off today's show talking about the latest Commander's mock draft updates from guys like Daniel Jeremiah and Dane Brugler from The Athletic. So before we get into today's content, we got a loaded show coming your way. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button because this is going to be a massive offseason for the Washington Commanders. I don't have to tell you guys that, all right? We're going to have a new head coach in the next couple of days or weeks. We're going to have probably a new quarterback uh, for this team next year. We're going to have a bunch of free agency uh, breaking news videos for you guys because the Commanders have the most cap space. And then also the NFL draft. We're going to have weekly Commanders mock drafts. We're going to have scouting reports on all the top draft targets for this football team. And oh yeah, all that content for free right here on YouTube. So if you love the Commanders, you want to become an expert on this football team this offseason and you never want to miss a big story, make sure you click that subscribe button right now. So let's start with Eric Bieniemy and a recent report that he interviewed for the head coaching position here in Washington. Uh, Josina Anderson from CBS Sports was the one to break the news, this is what she had to say. I'm told the commanders interviewed assistant head coach slash offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy for their head coaching job last week per source. The interview was labeled detailed and checked all of the boxes, whatever the hell that means. So when it comes to Eric Bieniemy, this year's offense, you know, it definitely wasn't what he was probably hoping for, right? Definitely not. So the points per game this year, 25th in the league, definitely not where you want to see it. Uh, you know, these aren't necessarily the worst numbers in the National Football League, especially early in the season. This offense was getting going a little bit with Sam Howell, but towards the end of the season, everything started to crumble. Sam Howell started to play really poorly. Of course, this offensive line was arguably the worst in football. And it just wasn't very good. They had the fourth most takeaway or giveaways as well with 32. Sam Howell led the league in interceptions. The red zone number there is a little bit uh, optimistic there. Top five in red zone percentage. They just didn't get in there all too often. So I think that Eric Bieniemy showed this year that, you know, in these situational downs, he can actually be pretty darn good as an offensive coordinator. He just needs that offensive line and the quarterback, which he just didn't have in Washington this year. And why am I so confident that Eric Bieniemy is a good offensive play caller? It's because he did it in Kansas City just two years ago. Remember, Patrick Mahomes won the MVP in this season, and it's not Andy Reid that calls the plays in Kansas City. It's his offensive coordinator, and last year, or, you know, two years from now, whatever you guys want to say, that was Eric Bieniemy. They were first in almost every single category. Uh, absolutely fantastic stuff there by the Kansas City Chiefs. And remember, they didn't really have like a true number one receiver. Yeah, they had Travis Kelsey, who was essentially their number one receiver, but they had guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, Justin Watson. It's not like they had like the best weapons in the world in Kansas City, yet they were number one in almost every category. So although I think that Eric Bieniemy should have been a serious candidate, he should have been the interim head coach, in the latter half of the season, especially when the playoffs were out of reach. I just don't think Biennemi is a serious candidate and somebody that the commanders are actually looking to potentially hire. Because I think that because last season, like the, the playoffs were completely out of reach for, for most of the second half of the season. If they wanted to try out Eric Biennemi and they really thought that this guy had a shot to win or to win this job, they would have given it to him in an interim role. I don't think that he is a serious candidate in their eyes and they're just kind of giving him an interview to kind of check their T or to cross their T's and dot their I's. But I wouldn't expect Eric Bieniemy to be the next OC uh, or the next head coach, I should say, of the Washington Commanders. Uh, and speaking of the next head coach of the Washington Commanders, the, the, the team is starting to uh, look for second interview requests here. They just got through their first slate of interviews, and they have requested a second interview with Dan Quinn and Raheem Morris the defensive coordinators in Dallas and Los Angeles, respectively. I like both of these guys. I would I'd be supportive of either one of these gentlemen if they got the job. Personally, I would rather go offense 
than defense, especially with likely a rookie quarterback coming to town. I'd probably rather go Ben Johnson, but you know what? These guys are good leaders. They know what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball, and it seems like they're going to be finalists to win this position. Now, in terms of the interviews that they've already done, uh, so you see Dan Quinn and Raheem Morris already interviewed. They're getting second interview requests. They interviewed B Enemy. They also interviewed the two coordinators there in Detroit, Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn. Then you got the, the two coaches on defense there in Baltimore and Mike McDonald and Anthony Weaver. Not Ever uh, a little bit of a typo there, but then we got Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator from Houston as well. I personally, guys, if I had to choose between the names on this list, I want Ben Johnson number one, and then I'd probably take Bobby Slowick as my plan B. But honestly, Dan Quinn, Raheem Morris, they're both good coaches. I wouldn't complain if they got the job either. So let's talk about Eric Bieniemy for a little bit here, and let me know down there in the comment section what grade. Would you give the hire if the Commanders actually ended up hiring Eric Bieniemy as their next head coach? Grade it for me. A, B, C, D, or F. How do you feel about Eric Bieniemy? Let me know down there in the comment section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break at some point during this video. That's how the platform works. When that happens, take advantage of that time by grading this potential hire. Now let's shift to the latest Commander's trade rumor here, centering around Jonathan Allen, former first-round pick defensive tackle, has been uh, made the Pro Bowl in 2021 and 2022, had a little bit of a down year here in 2023. But now the recent uh, Bleach Report article breaking down all the potential biggest trades of this offseason includes Jonathan Allen going to the Green Bay Packers uh, for a couple of mid-round picks. This is the trade idea that they had. You get a second-round pick, so you get the number 41 overall pick from the Green Bay Packers. So if this actually happened, guys, you would get, what, number 36, number 40, and number 41 right at the top of the second round in this year's NFL draft. So you'd really be stocking up these very valuable second-round picks. And then you also get an additional fourth-round pick. Green Bay's pick this year is 120. Fifth. So this is what Alex K. from Bleach Report, the author of this article, had to say about this potential trade for Jonathan Allen to go to the Green Bay Packers. The Washington Commanders are a good bet to be active in the trade market during the 2024 offseason. The team is coming off a disappointing 4-13 campaign and now have a new general manager in place in Adam Peters. Allen has some of the most trade value on the team after making back-to-back -back Pro Bowls in 2021 and 2022. While his 5.5 sacks this year were his lowest total since 2020, he still had a strong individual season and appeared in at least 15 games for the seventh straight year. Allen had openly expressed frustration with how the commanders were, were faring during a trying 2023 campaign. He's previously admitted that despite growing up as a fan of the team in Virginia, he's given thought to playing elsewhere and wants to be part of a winning franchise. While he hasn't officially requested a trade, it's possible he won't have to if the team implements a full-blown rebuild. And he finishes up here by saying ESPN's Jeremy Fowler said that teams had been inquiring about Allen's availability leading up to the deadline and noted that Washington could quote-unquote strip things down to the studs this spring, with Allen owed just $29.5 million in total over the next two seasons. There should be no shortage of interest if he shopped around. So for me personally, guys, I think because uh, the commanders are on the hook for the $12 million still left on, uh, on this guy, on Jonathan Allen's signing bonus, personally, I'm not trading him unless he straight up demands a trade because you're going to have to pay that $12 million over the next two years on your salary cap regardless, all right? So I don't want to go over that right now because... Personally, I don't want to pay this dead cap. I mean, I think that Jonathan Allen is a really good player. He's still young enough to be a part of this rebuild. And listen, it's definitely possible that Jonathan Allen just says, you know, I want to go to a winning franchise. I've been here long enough. I don't want to be a part of a rebuild. Trade me elsewhere. And listen, if that happens, I think that this trade offer would actually be pretty decent. But at the end of the day, I like Jonathan Allen. I think him paired with Deron Payne makes one of the best defensive tackle duos in the league. It could be the foundation of this defense for years to come. So personally, I don't want to trade him. But if he demands a trade, would you accept this offer from the Green Bay Packers? Type A for accept. Type D for decline. For me personally, if Jonathan Allen demands a trade, I think this is a pretty fair package for the Pro Bowl defensive tackle. 
All right, so let's go over uh, the latest draft buzz around the Washington Commanders here. Uh, uh, Daniel Jeremiah uh, from uh, NFL Network, and then, of course, uh, Dane Brugler from the, from the Athletic released their most recent mock drafts, and they both actually have uh, the Commanders taking UNC quarterback Drake May. Now, I think that because, you know, the Bears look like they're going to be taking Caleb Williams one, and the Commanders are sitting at two, they need a quarterback. I think from for most mock drafts throughout this process here, you're going to see Drake May being mocked to the Washington Commanders from here on out. And I'm perfectly fine with that. This is what Daniel Jeremiah had to say about this pick. It's a new era in Washington led by general manager Adam Peters. The Commanders find their quarterback of the future in May. And personally, guys, I'm on board with May. I mean, I've, I've gone down, I've gone over my scouting report on this kid on the show before. I think that he's really, really a good fit for Ben Johnson's offense. And even if you don't get Johnson and you hire Slowick or something like that, I still think he's a really good fit for this team. I think he's, he's got the talent to be a potential top 10 quarterback in this league. I think he's a better playmaker, actually, than people give him credit for. He's got the size. He's got the arm. He's got really all the things that you look for in a potential franchise quarterback. And for me, if I'm Washington, I'm perfectly okay sticking at two and taking Drake May. So coming up next, we got Dane Brugler's latest two-round mock draft. So of course, three picks for the Washington Commanders in his latest mock. But before I go over that, again, guys, make sure you guys click that subscribe button because we're going to have breaking Commanders trade news and draft news, free agency news, all that different stuff. Whenever breaking news hits here on the Commanders Report or for the Commanders, we're going to have a video for you right here on the channel. So if you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, now is your final chance to do so. Now let's get into Dane Brugler's mock here, uh, NFL draft analyst for The Athletic. Of course, we just said or earlier that Drake May is the pick at quarterback. Like I said, you're going to see Drake May uh, mocked to the Washington Commanders in most mock drafts that you see. So that's not really uh, a, a surprise here. This is what Brugler had to say about the Commanders going after Drake May. Obviously, the selection will depend on what the Bears do. Will it be as simple as drafting whoever doesn't go number one between Williams and May? Very possible. May is a fantastic consolation prize and has the talent to develop into a top 10 NFL quarterback. Completely agree with his evaluation there, and I like this pick quite a bit. Now, when he gets into the second round, things get pretty interesting here, where he has the commanders taking offensive tackle out of Houston, Patrick Paul. He's actually the brother of current commander's interior offensive lineman, Chris Paul. This is what Brugler has to say about this potential pick. The Commanders landed their franchise quarterback in the first round and used this pick to help protect him. At 6'7", 310 pounds with 36 and a half inch arms, Paul is massive with functional movements ready to be coached. His older brother, Chris Paul, is already on the roster, so the Commanders could roll out a brotherly tackle guard combo. Now, first of all, there's no way in hell Chris Paul should be starting for the Washington Commanders at left guard next year. No way. They need to address that position as well this offseason. But, you know, when it comes to uh, Patrick Paul here, I think that he is very raw. So I think he probably will be a second-round pick this year. This is probably about right. Uh, but he's definitely intriguing. Like Brugler says, he's got really long arms. Uh, he's got a really big frame. He's got an NFL left tackle body. Now, he's going to take a little bit of time to develop. But, hey, the Washington Commanders are just starting a new era here with a new head coach. They're rebuilding. Maybe this is a team that's going to be willing uh, to take a shot on Patrick Paul here and develop him over the next several years and take him at the top of the second round of this year's draft. And then the final pick here in Dane Brugler's mock, he has him going safety here. Tyler Newbin from the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Sky you ma row the boat, baby. And this is what he has to say about Newbin. Minnesota's all-time leader in interceptions. Newbin is an alert athletic safety who plays like a wide receiver when the ball is in the air. If the commanders don't re-sign Cam Curl, Newbin would be a perfect replacement. And listen, I love Tyler Newbin. All right. I think he's a really good player. I think there's actually a lot of good safeties, nickelback type players in this year's draft. Uh, and I think that any team would be lucky to add him to the roster. And, and honestly, if they don't go out and get Cam Curl and franchise tag him or sign him to an extension, whatever, I'd be okay with this pick. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that Washington really likes Cam Curl. He's still relatively young enough. I think they're going to franchise tag him. 
Uh, and I think that he'll be back with the Washington Commanders, and they're not really going to be looking to draft safety in the first two rounds of the NFL draft. So that'll be it for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of today's show. If you did so, that means that you are a real one. And if you made it to the end of today's show, do me a favor. Finish off today's show by going down in the comments section and identifying yourself as a real one for me down there in the comments.